Well, hello, Floss Tube. Welcome to Grandma's World. I'm Debbie, and I've been missing for a while. Um, I have been filming content. I filmed a lot of content. I edited it, and as I would edit it, I would see the finished product come together and say, no, I'm not going to post this. Um, I don't see myself as a whiny kind of um, disoriented, yes, and kind of chaotic, yes, I'm working on that, but I, I'm not a whiner, and yet everything that I put out, I came across as a whiner. So I had to take some time um, off of YouTube and really decide, did I want to do this, and what was it going to look like when I did, and I... The answer was yes, I want to do it. It's, it is really fun to do these and it helps me stay on focus on what I'm doing to be able to, to, to share what I've accomplished, helps me feel good about what I've accomplished, to um, share out some of the things that, even, even haul, sharing haul is fun and usually it helps me say, yeah, I'm gonna use this for this. You know, I'm going to use this fabric and on, on this chart and it helps me to set plans and it's that plan part that really does help me. Showing the whips, showing progress and then saying, yeah, and I want to finish this by this time and I want to be working on this this week. So I'm going to try again. Uh, I set some parameters for myself um, in the sense that I don't want the process of putting a floss tube together to take more than an hour. So I want to keep things better organized so that I'm not pulling it from all around different parts of the house um, too much, because I don't do my stitching here at the kitchen table. But um, I just, I want the process not to take such a chunk out of my day, because it was taking hours to do one, um, one hour video, and, and I don't have that kind of time. Um, so, as they say in Floss 2 World, so, <laughs> so let's, I'm going to get started uh, to try to keep it into that smaller parameter. Um, before I get into the, my cross stitch that I've been working on and will be working on for a while, I do want to also say that the whole premise of what I wanted to do with Grandma's World was to document not just cross stitching or not just embroidery or not just any one thing. I wanted to have a life documentation. And so I cut it up into different interest videos, but I never did the other ones. I never, I only just did floss tube ones for a while. I mean, my channel has some other stuff on it, but I, I stopped doing it to, to do longer floss tubes and spend more time with cross stitch. And that isn't what I wanted it to be. So. I'm going to record this floss tube. Did I say floss stitch? I bet I did. I want to do this floss tube and I will edit it. And I'm my goal, this is Tuesday. So my goal is going to be to record Tuesday, post on um, maybe Thursday or Friday. We'll have to see how that, how it goes with the editing part. Um, but I'm not going to post a floss tube unless I have something else to post at the same time rather than try to cram, I was getting two hour videos because I was trying to cram all the other stuff into that one video. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna break them up. So today it's going to be a floss tube and a Disney um, box opening or envelope opening for a Disney thing that I, that I subscribe to. Um, and then maybe some garden stuff. And I went on an incredible whale watch a week or so ago and I want to post that. My goal, I think, is gonna be a floss tube with one of those other things to it, although I'm hoping that this week I get one of each posted to get me started. All right, so floss tube. What have I been doing? Well, I did get some finishes this in this last period of time. Um, and I've already packed some of them away. I had some 4th of July pieces and I 
packed them away and I can't get to them right now. So I'm not going to show those, but I will show these. I'm really happy with them. And I'm going to add my little thing at, I think at the end of the um, video, I took a video of my um, decor, my entry decor, and my kitchen extra table decor. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute, but it's, I, it's summer and I'm about to take the summer down and that's where I use, for example, that's where I use this piece. I finished this one. I don't know, let's see if I can get it. It's kind of, some of these are kind of big and my camera is turned. Um, that's a little better, I guess. So it's Snowflower Diaries, Joyful World. It's in her blog. She, um, put out a whole calendar one year of freebies in her blog. And so um, this was the June freebie. And it, they were supposed to be all together. So this, this little border here was the border you were supposed to do if you were going to use it with all 12 months. But if not, then she also did this exquisite border. I loved doing this border um, for the, the piece, if you were gonna use it as a standalone piece. And that's what I did. And then I just finished it using the Priscilla Blaine tutorial um, of multiple layers of fabric. I loved it because like this fabric, I love this fabric. And I really have never had anything to use it with. And so when I got started doing this, let's see if there's one, yeah, the little um, pincushion flower here, the echinacea, I love it. So I was able to use it to put this together. Uh, and it sits in an easel in my entry with my other things that I'll show at the end of this. And then I also finished and I, I hit my deadline on this. I fished, fished, finished uh, Stephanie Webb, Lindy Stitches, A Stitch for Sweet Freedom. And I was able to put it in the entry for Juneteenth to honor my friends of color. This skirt was a, a bit of a challenge it doesn't in the pattern it doesn't the whole piece is such a um makes such a statement as a whole that i never zeroed in on what was going on with this skirt this is really yeah it was really a feat um i didn't talk about um, fabrics. So this is just one of the Michaels. The, you know Michaels is selling dyed Aida now in 14 I believe and this was they do it in a kind of a yellow orange and then a blue green and then a lavender and I think there's a pink now. Um, but I thought it suited it for what I wanted it for. Um, and I liked the fabric. I like a stiff Aida. It's 16 stiff Aida is my comfort zone. And so um, I, I thought it suited it. And I did sub out some colors. Um, I'm not a primmy person. I don't like things that kind of look faded. So I, in fact, I think I subbed all of the colors because I had a pretty nice stash of um, fancy flosses and wanted to use some up rather than go out and buy a bunch of stuff. So um, there just, there are a lot of color changes in there. Don't you love that beer though? He's just so dumpy. Yeah. And I don't remember this fabric. I don't remember anything off the top of my head. Um, I believe they're called four colors in this one um, and it was just a fabric I have a lot of Stitch me stash and I think it was one of hers I mean like I said I had two other 
two other fourth of I did two fourth of July's. Um, one of them I really liked. I used the housewives. Um, they had one of their charts that was an eagle in a kind of a Ray Dunn cup, cup, but I switched out a terracotta pot for the cup and it turned out really cute. But I've packed it away already, so I'm not going to show it. All right, so those are finishes. My work's in progress. I signed up for Just Keep Stitching, uh, Pam, C.V. Schaffner, Schaffner, I think. Pam, anyway, um, is coordinating a sal for Twin Peak Primitives American Trilogy, I think it's called. This is Shore of Freedom, is the only one I'm gonna do. And I finished the border on it. This is a big piece. I didn't realize it when I started it. I mean, I read all the dimensions, of course, to make sure I got a big enough piece of fabric. But, and this is it. This is the top of it. So I finished the border and then this started on this line. And I think I'm gonna change it out. The whites, this is just a problem with this pattern, I guess. Um, I tried three different whites in here and none of them was, I, I used Blanc and then I used the uh, B5200 and it wasn't that much better than the Blanc. And then I used a um, Victorian Motto Sampler white from her Patriotic collection and it was to lay them side by the whites side by side, it looked brighter. So I got started with that one and it just faded into this anyway. So I haven't, um, I'm not gonna take all the white around the border out. It's just gonna have to live that way with me. Maybe if I get it close, you can actually see there is some white in there. But as far as this piece that's going around the edge there, I'm going to keep experimenting and seeing if there's something brighter. Um, like I said, I'm not a primmy person. I don't like fat, anything that looks, flosses that look like they're faded, been fading for 50 years. And um, these, so I switched out my reds and blues. The red is a Victorian motto sampler called Love Me Red that I had in stash. Um, and then the blue is, oh, it's not called for, what is it? I can't remember. I'm going to have to go look again. It could even be from the same patriotic collection from Victorian motto, motto sampler. Um, but I wanted more, the, the called for was more of a rust and the blue was more of a, like a, I don't even know what to call it. It just was more powdery blue than, than a patriotic blue. So um, any rate, when I, when I do pieces like this, I like to do the borders first and that gives me places to bounce off of all throughout the whole chart and gets rid of the, it was tedious to do this border. Um, at least I found it so, maybe I was just too distracted by the other things going on in my life. But um, it, it'll give me places to work off of. I'm still waiting to hear, um, Tom, Victorian Motto Sampler is trying to uh, well, let me back up. A, a, Mac, a Victorian motto sampler skein is 20 yards. So I had a lot of Love Me Red, but it's my go-to red. I keep going and, and getting it for different projects. And I wasn't sure with this, as it developed into being as big as it is, here's the chart. It has a lot of red. It has the stripes on the balloon and the lighthouse and then, then the border and the um, part of the alphabet. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd have enough. And so I wanted to. Um, they're they're kind of working with me, um, and I just haven't heard back yet. But they're looking through the collection 
to see if they can pull together two skeins that are close enough to the Love Me Red, because they didn't have Love Me Red. They already checked that for me. To see if they have something that's closer, close enough to it that I could, you know, I could just leave the Love Me Red in the border, but go to a slightly different red for the rest of the chart. And that would be okay. So um, when I hear back from them, I'll start. Meanwhile, there's, there's that beautiful, there's that beautiful ship down there to work on and the whale in the water. So um, there's plenty to do on that. Speaking of a beautiful ship and whale in the water, I've also been putting in some time with Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. This is the design of Shores of Hawk Run Hollow and this is the way mine is going to be because I'm substituting some things out and moving some things around. I want and I know I've said this here before, I want my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow to represent the story of Captain Sam Bellamy and the pirate ship, the Widda, that sank off of Cape Cod in 1717, I believe. Um, and it's being excavated now. It was discovered and it is the only documented pirate ship that's been found and it was loaded with treasure and they keep bringing it up and they have created on Cape Cod one of the best museums I've ever been in. It is, um, the, the, the artifacts that are in there are amazing and the way they've presented it is a treat. Um, so if you're ever in that area, be sure to go check that out. But what I wanted to do, so what I did was eliminate um, two blocks. I guess these two. I'm eliminating this one and this one, moving this one down to here, and then subbing in blocks from other books to finish this out so that it's like this. So for this block, the, the widow was gone for a year, and so I want this to reflect the passage of a year. So, um, just for example, I put this block here and I took the, um, I don't like the tree, so I took the tree out. It looks kind of spring, summer, which is when they left. And then for this, this is part of the original design. But to me, it looked suitably kind of autumn, wintry. Um, and then this one is a sub out from Christmas at Hot Run Hollow. So that I would have one that looked really wintry here. And then that moved this one to be another spring summer. They're almost home and the widow on the widow's walk up there waiting for them to come back. And then this one is from Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow here. So I bought that book and it's um, a sinking pirate ship, a sinking ship with treasure and a treasure chest and the skulls and we are afraid. And then I'm going to switch out Lieutenant Pomeroy and put in uh, Captain Sam Bellamy here. So that's where I'm going with that. And this, the, the top four are finished. Yeah, so the top four, <laughs> see, here's my proof. And I've been working on this center block. This ship is a gorgeous beast but it is a beast. <laughs> it's taking a lot of time. Um, this is not quite half of the ship finished. And then when I, I have one more sail up here to do and a, a flag going over here, maybe the word, I might put the words in now or I might wait and come back. And then I have to shift the whole thing on the Q snap over. Oh, and there's another whole set of sails here. And then I shift the whole thing on the Q-snap and finish the boat. This is just half the boat and there's more sails 
up in here <laughs> to do plus a um, compass I think and a, I already finished the anchor did I finish the compass no just the anchor so I've been putting in some time with that and then for the well, with the housewives for Christmas in July jolly July I just barely got a start um, on Jingle Bell Cafe, which is here, over here. One of the, I love the, just the exquisite nature. When you, the, it doesn't look like it. When you hold something up like this, you don't get a feel for how those tiny little stitches create something that's really exquisite on their patterns. And I'm enjoying that a lot with the ones I've done. Um, just something that I've started doing, I'm a, definitely a Q-Snap fan. This is all I, all I use, not interested in changing. But what I've started doing is taking my chart, I'm gonna fold this the other way. I just take my chart and fold it into a small piece. This is my working sample. And just stick it into one of the peels or one of these magnets. Do I have those magnets on? Yeah, like one of these magnets to hold it where I'm working so that I don't have to keep looking up and down. For whatever it's worth, it's working for me. Okay. So I'm back and my um, camera battery died and it was hitting close to four gigabytes, which meant the camera was going to turn off. Uh, for those of you that it, this took me a long time to learn this, to find this information, because it was frustrating me that my camera kept shutting off in the middle of a recording. And what I learned from my homework was that um, a camera that will record more than four gigabytes is considered a video camera. And it's taxed differently than a regular camera that will take videos. And so most regular cameras, I'm using a Canon G7X right now, will shut off at four gigabytes so that they don't fall into that taxation category. So if you've been frustrated about that, at least that's, <laughs> that's why it does it. Um, and you have to, by video camera and I don't know people seem to record on their phones and not have that problem so I don't know if phones are different any rate um, I had started to record it I don't know if I did so I'll start over one of the um, works in progress that I have has been the um, for the magazine monthly challenge run by Carolyn Sook and Robin Hall is um, the th my theme project is always this one. It's called Happy Haunting. It was in a cross-stitcher magazine, and it's in these weird pieces sections because as something would come up in the acrostic, I would make this fit it so that I could work on this. For example, um, the, the uh, I believe, I was trying to work in the green color or the somewhere in, somewhere in it I worked the red apple in for the letter R and somewhere else I wanted to work on this some more and so I said you know how could I work in a G I think it was a G and I said well there's the green on the apple and it needed to work in somehow with literature and so I did a whole lot of homework and learned a whole lot of really interesting things about the color emerald green, such as originally it was produced using arsenic. So, and that's a, a whole nother video I might do someday is about the Wizard of Oz and L. Frank Baum and the populist movement and in social conditions during the late 19th century and how this arsenic color or the emerald color became really popular and it was making people sick <laughs> during the turn of the century. So anyway, that gave me the G I needed to do the apples. I put the pat poison on the apples. And then I had um, 
an O for owl at one time and um, the house, the open door on the house was for an O one time and the uh, moon, you know, there's just a lot in this pattern that can fit into the acrostic if I make it fit. So this is always my monthly. Um, I think one of them had a, I needed a vine or something. I use the vine for something in it. Um, anyway, I want to get back to this this month, and so that's going to move us into plans. And um, one of my plans is to return to this. I want to continue to work on um, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, Shore of Freedom, both the shores. <laughs> and um, Jingle Bell Cafe. I would like to do a little more work on that too. In addition, I don't just, it's, it, it's kind of interesting to me to see that just regular embroidery is coming back. People are, are starting to pull out their old embroidery pieces and I am finding it to be the perfect piece to take like to my mom's quilt club meetings or to visit my mom. Because there's no, you can, there can be a conversation going on and I don't lose count. A huge fan of a designer, an embroidery designer named Kathy Schmitz. And I've been working, I did finish one of her pieces and I couldn't find it this morning. And my new rule for doing these, if I'm going to fit that prep into that hour, I can't spend a lot of time looking for something I've misplaced. So I finished one of her smalls. And then I have this panel, it's called um, Patriotic, and uh, no, what's it called? My Country Petite Pillows, it's what it's called. And um, I have two of them. They're really cool. Uh, what you do is, well, you could just use them the way they are, you don't have to do anything, but what I'm doing is embroidering over the design and then she gives you the top of the pillow and the back of the pillow, the front and the back of the pillow pieces to make little small pillows. So on this guy, I finished the blues except for the, um, except for here. So his pants are done and the, the um, border on the flag is done. Did he disappear on me here? The border on the flag is done, mostly because I didn't have my red with me when I was working. And then this one is almost done. I just have to finish these, this embellishment down here, but the bunny is done. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. And I will, I want to keep doing that, but that's my to-go project. For haul, it has to fit in this basket. When I get something to say, oh, I'd like to share that with the floss tube community, I'm sticking it in this basket and that's what I'm limited to. Um, and that way I'll be able to find it. I have been able to score two Starlight Stitching Co. clutches uh, in the last, since I've seen you last. This is the newest one I bought, a uh, B, for my summer stitching and I am loving these. These are kind of game changers for me. Um, I'm hoping they help me not lose my needles so much. But, um, yeah, just as you've seen demonstrated, they, they hold your, your flosses for you. And um, I went ahead and put, it grabbed one of these. I went ahead and put the uh, needle minder on the piece of felt so that I can run the needle through the felt first and then onto the needle minder. I'm hoping that helps me hold on to things. Um, and then I've been putting these like this so that when I need one, I at one point had three or four of them on here, I can just grab them off of here. So that was haul and that was fun and it was, she puts them up and, and she sells out quickly but not so quickly that I haven't been able to get them. If I, I'll go, oh, that's right, I wanted to try from one of those and it might have been an hour that had gone by and I would have still been able to get them. New charts that just came in this week from Annabella's. 
I got Shine On Harvest Moon by Calico Confectionery. And I'm only going to do the centerpiece. And I'm going to put it on something dark, I think. So we'll see. Oh, I didn't mention. I'm going to go back to this. On my um, Shores. This not that one. Did I put it here? The fabric, I forgot to mention the fabric for this. This is a fabric from my vintage needle arts and it's called um, Timeless Gray. And I, it wasn't quite what I thought it would be. It looks more gray here, thank goodness, than I thought. This is what I saw on camera when I bought it was more of this gray and it's almost a taupe brown. I love it. Uh, certainly a lot more than the pictured beige uh, from the model, but it, it, it's just a, a really beautiful um, taupey brown. So I think I'm going to be getting more of that. Just I don't have a lot of neutrals in stash. I'm such a color person that I tend to join clubs and say, give me the color stuff. And um, so that's, but I don't think, I think I might look up for a real gray an almost a night type gray for this and then floss toss and see how it goes and then this whole line this primrose cottage b series um i love all of it and as i bought a couple as um, pdfs and this one i just ordered the paper from annabella's so exciting. It's not happening here in California. I wish it could, but um, I'm watching as Be Stitch Me is opening a shop, um, Pam on um, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough opened her shop, Stitch New England, in North Attleboro, Massachusetts, and um, Annabella's is opening a shop in North Carolina, I believe North Carolina. Uh, and it's just really wonderful. And, and I know that the floss tube community supporting their online stores helps with that, um, or has helped with that, it has to. So um, it's kind of it's neat. Oh, I was really smart and put my 4th of July finishes in my floss tube basket. Yay me. So this was one that I did and fully finished. It is, I believe, Silver Creek Samplers. I'm going to get in trouble here. Um, and it is called um, Freedom's Promises. Shoot, I should have pulled that pattern. I wasn't expecting to find it. Um, Freedom, Liberty's Promises, Freedom's Promises. Anyway, Equality, Justice, and Hope. I love the message there. This looks like it's a pretty good size. It's not. It's a small, um, but it looked cute with my 4th of July stuff. And then this is the stitching with the housewives piece that I did. Um, it's supposed to be in a white mug like a Ray Dunn cup, but at the time that I bought the pattern, I wasn't into Ray Dunn. And I didn't know what, what the big deal was, and I didn't want it in a cup. I'm a gardener. I wanted it in a pot. And so what I did for this was buy a pattern on Etsy of a terracotta pot, something that was growing in a terracotta pot. I did the housewife's design, the eagle and the flag and then the uh, stars across the bottom, got all of that done, even the little swag here, and then went in and filled in from the cross stitch terracotta pot chart the rest of it. And I'm really happy with it. I have a whole bunch of these what's in my cups that I love everything except the cup um, and now I'm an oh, Ray Dunn collector so <laughs> you know, it's, but I still prefer the pot to the cup so I'm going to do more of those and then the little thing that it's in please be this no I know I kept this I kept the name of the company Here. So I guess I'll have to put some stuff in the description. Um, the Little Uncle Sam, it's a kit that you buy something in polka dots, something. I'll put it down below with the other stuff. 
But um, it's supposed to be on this stand. Never got it that far. So darling, it comes in a whole bunch of pieces and you have to paint it yourself. And if you decide to go check it out, I'm going to just warn you, be really careful. You can kind of see on the back how this is cut out. There's no guide to say, here's what's going to be flesh, here's what's going to be blue, here's what's going to be red and white striped. And I kept overlapping those sections on his face and I'd have to go back and fix it. So plan it ahead of time. It's well worth it really cute was perfect for this piece but um a little tricky it's a little tricky to do what else is in my bag in my basket fabric be stitch me fabric um this is either july or august it must be this is august so it must have been july it was called heat waves see i love the colors and I think, I'll look at it and say, oh, I'll never use that for anything, but it's pretty in the collection. And then the perfect piece will pop up on a design somewhere for it. So I'll use that. I may even, um, it might even be fun to do that on it. So we'll see. And then this is another Be Stitch Me fabric. Also summer called My Sunshine. I haven't bought, this is a lie, I'm just going to lie right to your face. I haven't bought a lot of charts, not as, I'll say I haven't bought as many charts per month as I was buying for a while, um, but I have been buying charts. But this one, not interested in doing the whole series, although I did buy the bear for my bear entry, maybe someday, and then this one came out, and that, it was just an oh my gosh moment for me. It has to happen for my patriotic entry. Not so much for the woods, but for the fact that the bald eagle is our national bird. I'm sure you've all heard the story. Um, my students used to love the story. Benjamin Franklin did not want the bald eagle to be the national bird because in his mind, and it's true, bald eagles are carrion eaters. They, are, they do fish. Um, but they also will be like vultures and just eat what's laying on the road. And he thought that was not appropriate for the country's national bird. Um, he thought it was appropriate. He saw that he wanted, he didn't want the bald eagle, sorry. He didn't want the bald eagle, he wanted the turkey to be the national bird. He felt it was more American and more of a hardworking American personality. And this might be the background. This is my um, Crazy Annie's Fortnite fabric delivery. It was goofy, and it came at about the same time as the bald eagle. And I thought, well, I, that might work. I don't now as I see it on camera. I don't think so. I think I need more, just a paler um, something with more olive in it. Oh, I see. No, I wasn't thinking of that for that. I got my Garen Toten bag. I'm part of the uh, Bag of the Month Club. And this thing is just beautiful. I know they're having a hard time getting enough fabric, but they always manage to pull it off. I think this is my, I think March will be the end of my second year with the um, Project Bag of the Month with them. And um, I think I only have like three that weren't my weren't singing my song, let's put it that way. And then in the mailbox, the same day as this bag, was this fabric, Fortnite fabric from the Crazy Annie's Club. It's called Goofy. And I said, well, that's appropriate. That really goes with that. Goes well with that bag. Enjoyed that. And then this was another one from the club, the Crazy Annies. Um, the boys are having a hard time. They, I think they got, they both got COVID. 
um, Christian and Derek, and um, I, they were, were kind of surprised. They agreed, as, as I understand it, they agreed to do Crazy Annie's and made the commitment to her and then found out that what she wanted, what they wanted at Crazy Annie's was something very different than what they usually do. And I think it took them a while to kind of get up to speed with that. And then they got COVID and I think that set them back. And so I got, I want to say maybe both of these were in the same bag in one month, this month, to kind of catch us up. And I got another one. I want the color and it wasn't color. It was very... I thought neutral and I thought well maybe they just needed to fill in and that's okay and then this was a the July um, project bag and I was so delighted with this I actually made myself a vinyl faced project bag out of this fabric I loved it so much and so when I saw it come back around I it was so totally appropriate the only other thing I have in haul is not cross-stitch. This is a Kathy Schmitz project. I bought the kit um, and I'm so excited about it. I just haven't kind of buckled down to start it yet because it's going to be a while. But it's an it's a, um, embroidery supply keep kit. And this is what it looks like. It's not cross-stitch, it's using more traditional embroidery. And here's what it looks like on the back. It's called My Little Project Nest by Kathy Schmitz. And it, um, the kit, I'm just gonna go through it quickly. It was only $49.99. And when I looked at what, what she was putting in the kit, I said, I, it, I would spend more on that, on gas, trying to track this stuff down. So, um, I haven't opened it yet, so forgive my crinkle. There's the in it. The background fabric, plus the um, what I think is the flannel wool for the things that hang and hold things, I think. And then there are, um, is this the lining fabric? Yes. This is the fabric for here and here, over here. There's fabric there. And then the trim fabrics. These are cottons that go here with this. All right. And I don't know, for something like this, I fell in love with what she did. I want mine to look like that. Look at the back of it. It has this little bird. It's a wreath with a bird in the nest. I want mine to look like hers. So I want that, that's why I wanted the kit, because she had that stuff in it. And then she has for us everything else. From the thread gatherer, there's some silk ribbon. From CGT, there's a color Victor. Some more ribbon and rickrack. From CGT is High Country Floss. Cottage Garden Threads, um, made in Australia. 100% cotton on this one. Even some um, stuff to stuff the um, is there a, like a, I'm sure she'll tell me. There has to be a pin keep in here, huh? Anyway, stuffing, uh, floss, is this the, um, yeah, Valdani floss, which I haven't used yet. This for the trim around the edge. 
and then the buttons that you need. Amazing, amazing Kathy. If you ever come by, just know I'm so excited about this. Um, and it, I, it was a bargain, absolute bargain to not have to track all that down and to have everything I need to make this beautiful piece. Um, I just have to figure out when to stick it in. <laughs> Where to I have to figure out when to schedule it in. My camera got the four gigabytes and turned off. Um, which means we're at about 50 minutes, about time to stop. I'm going to keep them to an hour, no more than an hour. And I just want to share, Kathy said, Kathy Schmidt said that her favorite marking pen was the um, Pilot Frixion Clicker. Um, she's, it's an erasable pen. She says that it will disappear with heat. So I'm kind of... You know, yeah, I'm going to use the pens. And I kind of learned my lesson doing this, that if you can use a color that's a little bit different than what you're embroidering, it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> so I bought the assorted colors, hoping that I can find a color to mark with that will totally cover with the thread, but not be the same color as the thread. So plans, I think I kind of covered that already. Um, goals, gratitude to um, some of the people that I have been watching that inspire me every week um, and encourage me every week. Carolyn Zook is at the top of that list. Um, Sunshine Stitchers, I uh, just want to uh, wish the best to EJ and um, Shelia. You two are delightful together. You have no worries. You are going to carry those stitchers and keep us shining. Um, del just in delightfully, no worries at all. Um, I also watch regularly when she has time to do it, Pam's um, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. I watch, of course, Priscilla and Chelsea every Saturday and um, just keep stitching on Sundays and 614 Stitcher. That's kind of my community and kind of why I'm coming back to Floss Tube is you don't get to really feel part of the community unless you're participating in it. So I'm readjusting, refocusing uh, live stuff. My mom, I'm happy to tell you, is still with us and still functioning beautifully. She just had her 90th birthday. We're going to Disneyland again on Saturday. <laughs> We go take her once a month, and I take her to, her to her quilt club once a week, and she is 90. She's a, had the, one of the healthiest 90s I know. We took her to, a, I took her to her cardiologist a few years ago, about three years ago. He, she was 87, I remember that. And she was complaining about something, and the doctor was just looking at her, you know, attentively. He's a very kind man, and she adores him. Um, but he didn't know what to say to what she was, she was complaining about something. And there was this pause and, and he didn't quite know what to say. And I finally blurted out, well, you know, mom, most of his patients your age are dead. <laughs> and he just laughed because really, when you're 90 and you just have a few controllable body problems, you're doing really good. You're doing really well and that's where she is. You know, she's old but she's still very much with it. She, she knows who we all are, can communicate with all her friends. Uh, you know, I have no complaints, you know, and I, I do still go three days a week. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to put laundry in last night, oops. Um, but I do go three days a week and try to, try to help out a little at the house. My brother does a lot. And my sister's there all night and keeps, helps her keep track of her meds and stuff, so. Um, it's, it's going well. It takes a chunk. It takes about three days out of my week. And so everything else has to fit in. The drought has me crazy. Um, I converted everything to drip. The pressure's all off. And so my sprinkler system keeps blowing fittings. The guy comes tomorrow to do the ladder, what I hope will be the last repair on that. And then I can get back to watering what I can water. We have some expectation that on September 1st, they're just gonna tell us no outdoor watering. 
So I've been filling my rain barrel with the rain barrel with the um, water from my shower as my shower warms up. It's amazing. It's like three, two or three gallons of water goes down the drain when you do that. But not anymore. I will be out there watering things by hand because I've got a lot of plants I don't want to lose. Fortunately, I had already converted, I dug up my front yard and converted it to a native garden. And it doesn't look real great right now because it's summer and native plants go dormant in the summer here. But um, um, at least I was ahead of the game. And in my city, we went on once a week watering, but drip systems were exempt from that. And we could water when we needed to water. So whew, that was nice. But I don't know the the entire Southern California fell 4% short of our 30% reduction. And they had threatened that if we didn't meet our reduction numbers, that they were going to shut us off completely in September. So we'll see. See how that goes. Um, but that's a big deal. I have some quilting things I'm trying to get back into. Um, and just trying to get my head squared, squared away. And it's coming together. It's coming. I went back to meditation in the mornings. That helps a lot. And um, still fasting and still um, staying away from sugar. And I ate rolls. I ate flour yesterday for the first time in a while. And I'm feeling it today. My sinus is all stuffed up and my ankles are swollen. And so sometimes you have to try it and say, oh yeah, that's what it was. It was that. So anyway, I'm going to say um, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. And, um, uh, you know, enjoy your stitching. I did get my little window air conditioner replaced this, this year. So if it gets really hot, here I can go into that family room at least and stay cool while I stitch but it the weather here has been where I live where my mom is it's consistently over a hundred and we I drive back here next to the coast and we're in the 80s so we've had a very mild summer here along the California coast <laughs> sorry I'll try not to jinx it so I'm going to stop now and record my little Disney thing if you would like to see that I have a a um, shopper, a personal shopper in Disneyland that I subscribe to and I get an envelope every month and I have four of them sitting here that I've been waiting to do on a, on an, an, un, it's not an unboxing, an unenveloping uh, to see what I, what I've got waiting for me. So, um, and watch for the whale watch. We had a whale that stayed with our boat traveled over 200 yards to get to our boat. We were just kind of parked there and went around us a humpback for an hour. So that was amazing. And I'm gonna post that up here so you can have that experience too. Okay, so bye. I hope to see you next week, once a month for sure, but I'm aiming for Tuesdays posted somewhere. I have to see who's posting when. I was looking to see when nobody posted. <laughs> Chris Crossstitch was on Tuesdays. 614 Stitcher was on Wednesdays. Um, I don't know if there was anybody Thursdays. I'd have to double check that I watched anyway. Um, and then my day, Saturday, I'd start the day with Priscilla and Chelsea, and then Carolyn would come on sometime in the afternoon, and then Sunshine Stitchers in the evening. And then on Sunday, when I got home from my mom's, I would have Just Keep Stitching. Um, oh, I know um, Pam. Stitching in the Land of Good Enough was also on Wednesdays for a while, but I don't know, I have these people with bigger lives, you know, when you have a life, life gets in the way sometimes. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to look at my lineup and see, is there some place I can fit in my own stuff? Enough jibber jabber as, oh, that's another one. Yeah, Stitch Roadies. I watch Anna all the time and she calls it jibber jabber. So enough of that. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, fall is coming and I wanted to take a minute to document uh, the summer decor that I've been enjoying and share it out. Um, I kind of got into the bee thing this year. Well, the last two years, three years, five years. Um, so let me just 
run through, get on on video the my entry, um, and it's just a, a bunch of stuff like this gal. Is my little beekeeper. She's a Boyd's bear, and I've had her for probably 20 years. In her little sweater and pants, and of course her net. Not that any bee would ever go after her. I'm gonna work on her positioning a little bit. Um, and then this year I added the bee suite, Ray Dunn. Uh, she came with a skip, as I recall. And this is my finish for summer, is the um, Snowflower Hour Diaries Joyful World June piece. I just took out the word June here and added this flower so that I could keep it up for the whole summer. More Boyd Spear pieces, ancient. Um, and then I just, the Boyd stuff really lent themselves to the Ray Dunn. And this is another guy. I can't remember the name of the company. It's probably tucked in here somewhere, but I'm not going to hunt it out. I fell in love with this line because they reminded me of the Country Bears at Disneyland in the Country Bear Jamboree, um, which we don't have anymore at our Disneyland. And then, um, I don't know, I just really, really do love the Dunn with all of my bear collections. And then this year I found this piece of fabric. I haven't quite zeroed in on what I'm gonna do with it, but it is gonna be a wall hang for summer here, eventually. Um, I'll figure it out. I have more companion pieces to it that I need to play with, but for now I'm content with it there. And then this is my, um, I don't know, it's my display that started with some of the Ray Dunn that was in storage, honestly, and I fell in love with this uh, Priscilla Blaine uh, Stitching with the Housewives summer piece that was in Punch Needle and, and Primitive Embroidery Magazine. Um, I made a mistake on it, so it's not quite the way it appeared, but it is close enough. Um, found this piece at home goods replace the hooks the hooks that it came with were not really big enough to hold the mugs like i wanted and um, i am really happy with it i just while i was putting it together found the home piece um, i keep wanting to do their home is where the wreath is series but i don't want to do the letters so I keep looking for something that will fit that need. Um, so I brought this home and then I said, no, I love that bee. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and use it in the summer. Um, the You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine has personal meaning to me that I won't go into now, but more Boyd Spears and just more done um, pieces that kind of go with it. And then this is a Maggie Va uh, Vanderwall piece. I love her work and I, I can't stop adding it here and there throughout the decor. Um, I'm, I'm kind of guessing maybe this is an idea for a book. There's a whole story, a whole line of these hummingbirds and bumblebees and I can't, they're clear, clearly having some kind of an altercation. <laughs> the expression on the bird but I'm not sure you know what the story is and I haven't taken the time to track it down uh, this is her calendar for August and then while I was trying to put this together for the kitchen this table is my dumping table in the kitchen when I bring groceries in or whatever or have things that need to go out to the garage and I'm just kind of collecting them to make a, a trip and I found this tablecloth on Amazon. I thought it was so perfect for over here. So that's pretty much it for my summer. How I've lived my summer, I'm looking forward to fall. I'm not a big fan of summer and there's just been a lot here in Southern California that has been distressing about this summer. So um, 
fall is usually not much better here. In fact, it gets worse, especially if the Santa Ana's come up and we have all the wind. But I don't know. I'm ready for a change of season, I think.